Hello and welcome back to my craft room. Well, it's a hot day again. We're having a bit of a heat wave here in the UK. Um, after a couple of weeks of it all being a bit dreary, so that's okay. But it's quite hot. My craft room is the hottest room in the house, so uh, reasonably short and sweet today. So I have today sent off the last of my slow stitchery squares, and um, they were an absolute joy to do. The whole thing has been such a blast. But to be honest, I'm quite glad to have a little bit of a break from stitching <laughs> it won't be long i'll be back on it tomorrow <laughs> won't be to stay away for long but i thought today i'd like to do a little video about something else um so what i'm going to need i've got my i still got 20 something art squares to do um so i'm getting on with them in the background but i'm going to need some cards to go with them so i thought i would make a few simple cards i need to keep them flat because i don't want to go into uh large letter post with so many to send out you've got to be careful I'm trying to keep everything as flat as I can um, and I've got this lovely stamp set this is one of the um, things that was very kindly given to me by one day saving one day saving I'll put a link to them below and a link to the um, products that I'm going to use today it's only one of the items actually I'm going to use today and um, and you can check them out if you would like to it looks really fun it's a little stamp uh, set with matching dies and I love playing with stamps and matching dies and you'll see why in a minute so let's go to the desk and I'll show you what I've got to play with what else I'm going to use so here is the stamp set and here are the matching dies so you've got a die so the dies are to, if for anybody that doesn't know you do need a die cutting machine to use them with so this is my little very very ancient cuttle bug but it still works you need the cutting boards Oops, to go with it and I'm actually using an embossing mat as well today but that's not an essential and to use the stamps you can just you can use them just with um, you know, normal little stamp blocks like this and there's various different types I've just got a few different types there to show you but I've got this um, stamping platform the most reasonably priced one that I could find which was actually a Tonic Studios one or Tim Holtz one um, absolute godsend especially if you're making a lot of cards and for doing certain techniques where the placement is um is crucial and uh if you want to be able to stamp back over to get a perfect image this is just such a godsend and i've got it so i'm going to use it <laughs> but you could definitely uh obviously you can use stamps just with a simple stamping block as well um i'm going to use this smooth white card because I just find there that it's the nicest thing to, to stamp and ink onto. And I've got these cards, I've got quite a build up of these card packs that you get when I was getting the Artful box for, I think I got that for three months. And he was putting these packs of cards. I've got these other ones, I think these have come from somewhere else as well. So um, I've got some of those to use. And where I can, I will go just straight onto the card, but some of them I shall be stamping onto this first and applying it. Well, I'll make up my mind as I go along. I'm going to use some of these pattern papers I've been hoarding for ages. I really love them. They remind me of old fabrics and things. I just really love those. I'm going to try and use some of them as well. I've got a little bit of, uh, this is just like sticky sticky note stuff, like post-it note kind of stuff, but all in one thing. It's really handy. I've got all of these brushes because I'm going to be using my distress inks, which I'll show you in a minute. And I've got this. This is one of my favourite. Um, oh, I've spilled water there. That's not a good idea. This is one of my favourite black inks to use. This is a dye ink, so I can go over it with uh, distress inks and pigment inks, or I think it's all right with alcohol markers as well, this stuff. I just, yeah, I use it for everything, and I think and this tuxedo black is a really nice, dense black, which I like. I've got a little pot of water with a, with a paintbrush in it. So I think that's everything I'm going to need. A bit of double-sided tape, I'm sure I want later, maybe some Pritt stick or other glue. But yeah, that's about it. And I'm just going to show you my teeny weeny collection of distress inks. <laughs> I love distress inks. So you've got two kinds. You've got the original distress inks like these, and they come in these little dinky sizes as well. Which is, oh, which you can't see because, yeah, these little dinky ones as well. I think you buy these in sets of three. Is it three or four? Um, that's really nice because it gives you a chance to get a be better range of colours for a lower price point, which is always good. Um, and then there's the distress oxides as well now last time i've had these for donkey's years I haven't bought any new ones for a long time but last i looked you couldn't get the just 
the distress oxides in these dinky sizes which is a bit frustrating actually these are kind of more opaque and have more of a chalky look and and react slightly differently they're all water reactive and they all stay water reactive it's important to remember when they're dry as well and i just love some of the colors like uh, blueprint sketch picked raspberry abandoned coral i just love all these fossilized amber one of my favorites spiced marmalade marmalade yeah, just love them. I love them. They are an investment. But having said that, I've literally had these for donkey's years. I've forgotten them and left the lids off. Oh, another favourite colour. Twisted citron. They just stay so juicy. They just, they're brilliant. They are worth, they're worth the investment. But I, I've built up this collection over years and, and literally bought one or two as and when I could afford them or saw them on special offer. I'm sure there are more, lots and lots and lots more colours now that I've... <laughs> That I'm not even aware of but I've got a pretty good range and ones like these dark dark color ones are great for just sort of distressing things and aging things as well I'm gonna have them to one side because I wasn't sure which colors I was gonna want so I just bought them all over <laughs> then the drawer can slot back in later on so the dies that come with this set I'm gonna look up now just to see how much this set was so I can let you know Okay, that set is six pounds at the moment. Now, postage wise, I think I, I did a bit of an experiment and it didn't seem to matter, matter whether I put in an item for two pounds or an item for 35 pounds. The postage came out the same, something like five pound 44 to the UK. I think they post all over the world. It comes direct from China, I believe. So yeah, and, and if you spend over $50 worth, whatever that is in your equivalent currency, the postage is free. But obviously, if you if you were just buying one set of dies for six pounds, and then you've got to add five pound forty four postage on it, you've got to bear that in mind. So, so I've got the dies here to cut out the shapes that you see here, not the words, just the other shapes. And there's this little fence one, which comes out really cute. So that's how the fence comes out, which is quite nice, quite nice kind of backgroundy piece, or even as a little mini stencil as well. Actually, two little legs. I love that that cuts out with the. When it cuts, you get the little speckles, which is <laughs> really cute. Um, there's a little sweet corn, little seeds on the ground. Um, lots of different corn kernels. It's nice that there's more than one if you want to cut lots. It's annoying if you have to keep putting them back through again and again. I like that you've got the corn and then the corn, the husks there. And there's a chicken coop to go in the background if you want to a sign, which is nice because you can always stamp a greeting on that as well. So any of these greetings would fit on there, which which is quite a nice idea. A lot of this would, would give me some really nice opportunities to make, oh, there's a sweet corn plant, to make um, three dimensional scenes, which is something I love to do. But for my purposes today, I want to make some flat cards for going in the, in the post. Um, I love that. I love the log. The log's got that texture in it. You can see all the texture in my palm. <laughs> so if I inked, if I brushed some ink over that, it would pick up all that texture and that would be a really nice little feature on the card. But again, I I'm, I'm, won't be doing that today because I'm keeping this all very flat. I've got this uh, smallest piece of the card. I'm going to create a nice kind of colourful piece of card that I can use to um, stamp the chickens onto. I think that'd be quite fun. And I don't, um, my chickens aren't going to be realistic colours, obviously. So yeah, you don't have to use it. You can stamp with these and you can um, use brushes like these or blending tools to apply them. But you can also, and, and you can apply them direct to paper, as, to the paper as well. Um, but you can use them in the way I'm going to show you now. There's lots of different ways, actually. So many different ways. Well, I've got a bit of oxide mix oxide there it's the color i'm going for the fossilized amber so that's spiced marmalade fossil fossilized amber let's go for a little bit of um abandoned coral <laughs> just for fun and i'm just going to spritz this with a bit of water and i'm gonna um just just drag this through to get some interesting color that's quite fun Let's give that a minute to dry before I do anything else with it. Obviously you can stencil and all kinds of things with them. I'm not going to be doing that today. So many different things you can do. If you, I think especially with the um, oxides, if you stencil one over another, you get some incredible effects and then you can spatter with water as well. Do that in a minute when this is dry. Let's just do a bit of, show a bit of purple as well. Let's 
after a bit of using the brush as well. I just want a really interesting colourful piece of paper to cut some of these from. And this kind of smooth white card I think is the nicest thing to use them on really. Pitt's Raspberry, still use the same colour for that. I don't worry about kind of contaminating the inks and things like that, I don't tend to bother about that too much. And you're only going to see very little bits of this here and there, so uh, and I'm not going to need anything like this much. <laughs> I should probably have a little bit of a look at the, um, the colours that I want to use these with as well, make sure I've got, yeah, so let's have a bit more of the oh wilted violets i'm just gonna <laughs> it's just the colors it's just the colors i just love them look at this wilted violet Ooh. and they all blend so beautifully together totally forgotten about the colors of the paper again mermaid lagoon that's another favorite that'll be out in a minute for the sky oh let's have a bit of rusty hinge I like the rusty hinge and the orange marmalade together. So I could if I wanted to. If I wanted to introduce a little bit of uh, texture here, I could use a stencil. Let's just try using this as a stencil just so I can show you what I mean. <laughs> so you can quite easily get little bits of um, little bits of interest there. Should we do? Should we do some more then? I'll tell you what, I will use some of this abandoned coral over the top of here. Let's see what that does. cracked pistachio <laughs> I just get carried away and start having fun with these it's just yeah so I've already got some orange on there as well so <laughs> and I'm this isn't gonna this is just to cut I'm gonna be cutting very small snippets out of this so I don't need to worry um, about what this looks like at all. I'm just uh, just having fun putting the different colours together and just having a play. And now I'm just gonna, this is dry where I dipped that, be quite fun. So I'm just now gonna flick this with water. So you can see some fun things happening there. And you can go and layer over the top as well, but you've got to bear in mind that they will always stay water reactive. Even once they're dry, they'll still be water reactive. So let's stamp some chickens. So for this first idea, I'm just going to stamp, stamp some of the chickens straight onto this. And I like these stamping platforms because you can get... You can get you can get them set up and then you can do multiple versions of the same thing um, if, it, if the image doesn't stamp properly you can stamp again and it's not a problem this will be the wrong way around for me let's have it that way. okay let's just do this young lady first love these images i think it's so cute i think this is my favorite <laughs> she just looks like such a nutcase go it's picked up my stamp I've re-inked this just now before I started that's the thing with all of these um, inks yes they are an investment in the first place but you can buy these little um, little re-inker bottles that's the one for this which <laughs> it just I basically I won't have to buy this ever again I'm not even sure I'll have to buy the refill ever again cover it with ink just little taps And press it down and if it doesn't work first time I can go again that's actually not a bad image but I might go again that's better she's cute <laughs> she's very cute she's my favorite <laughs> I could have put them all on at the same time, really, but there we go. Now I'm going to take one of my little cards. OK, 
going to place this where I want it. I've got hay chick there as well. It was cute just like that. <laughs> right, and now I'm going to cut out just the body part. And I can add that on there. Right, leave that to dry and I'll show you how, how I'm going to come back and finish that off in a minute. Right, to finish this one off I'm going to just um, use a brush to apply the Distress Ink straight to the paper. So there's two ways I can do this. I can either put a little bit on my glass mat like that or you know, a bit of plastic or whatever and I can Just make a nice washy effect like that. Just use it like a watercolour. A bit more intense. And then you can still blend over the top, you can still reactivate with water and all of that. Or I can let's just get rid of that in a minute. Just use a wet brush and apply straight from the ink pad and you get a bit more of a vibrant colour that way. And again you can layer to get more intensity so this is the oxide this is a slightly opaque one so I'm going to do that just to finish the last little details of this I'm going to give her bright pink hair <laughs> this is Jackie chicken and you could do this with um, coloured pencils, alcohol markers, whatever your favourite colouring medium. Just need to bear in mind that um, whatever ink you use needs to be compatible. You don't want an ink that's going to dissolve with uh, alcohol markers if you're using your Copex, for example. There you go. That's not very. Uh, that's not very accurate. Oh, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'll just let that dry while I do the tail, and then I'll put another layer on. I think. Okay, hey chick. <laughs> I think she's really cute. <laughs> right, so I have finished that card off now. I've just done a scribbly line around to create a bit of a border, just to keep it simple. Um, little tip there is, don't worry about trying to do a straight line. Just do a crooked line two or three times. It looks like you've done it on purpose. <laughs> and I like doing these little kind of tick marks across it as well, just to a little sketchy detail. Sometimes you just go, f -f -f, you know, just keep it looking sketchy on purpose then you haven't got to do straight lines <laughs> I also decided that the beak didn't show up enough so I cut a tiny scrap of that yellow that I'd been stamping on and I used the white um I used my Signo Uniball broad to do some little dots in the hair and on the chest there to sort of brighten it up a bit um I, th I think it is you know it is quite plain uh, one thing that I found is that this card that these ready-made art for cards are on I, there's a I don't know if it's finished can you see if I just catch the light there there's this kind of weird finish I don't, I don't think the inks like it as much as the card I usually use which is this it's just like a smooth I don't even know what kind it was now um but it's a nice smooth card that's kind of sold for things like stamping on and, and stuff um something like uh what's it called Nina Quest or something I can't remember but there's all kinds of cards that are sold for stamping on and they do seem to work better for this sort of thing the inks blend better on them and everything so um, I think what I'm going to do for the rest of them is I've cut some pieces of that card that I like to use and I've cut them to be just slightly smaller than the ready-made card so I can put some sort of um, I might even cut them down smaller still I can put some sort of background paper or something on here we'll just ink the edges um, and then I can I can mount the the stamped piece on top like that so that's what I'm going to do going forward but it's quite nice to see what you can do with just using the plain card as it is and I will stamp a greeting in there as well in fact let's do that now let's not forget the inside eh I'm going to put the little chick little egg chick thing <laughs> have a happy day 
have it so that the chick is standing on the on the words almost. And I could add some colour to that as well if I wanted. Yes, what well, cute. The next thing I want to do is do something with these two chickens, but I want them overlapping each other. So I thought I'd just show you how I would do that with uh, by, by using masking. So I'm going to use some of this um, masking um, tape stuff and I'm going to stamp this one on there. So that will do. And then I'm going to just cut this out. I'm not going to worry about the little feet. Probably don't need to worry about the back because it's this end, it's this half that I'm gonna be overlapping, I think. So yeah, in fact I don't need to worry about the head either really. It's really just this bit that's going to matter. I suppose I should cut it out more carefully because you can keep them out and use them again. If you really organise, you can just keep them with the stamp set and you've only got to cut them out carefully once. You can use them over and over again. Pop that right into the corner. So if I want to replace it, I know exactly where it needs to be. Okay, so now I'm going to put my chicken down again on the card I'm going to use. Pick up the stamp. Stamp it out. So I stamp my chicken out there. And now I want to add the other chicken. But I don't want to stamp the other, I don't want them overlapping each other because that would look weird. So I want this chicken to look as if it's behind this one. So I'm going to place this chicken where I want her. And then I'm going to find the mask that I've now lost. There it is. I'm going to put the mask over here. Oh, look, I've messed up there. Luckily, I've got my sand eraser. Hopefully that will take the ink off. Not bad, I might have to... Uh, I like to put some little extra embellishments there to hide that. So now, if I stamp over here, there we go. And now I can peel off that little mask. And this chicken appears in front of the other chicken. Another thing I can do, if I just... Uh, make a mask of this other chicken. I could cut this mask out using the die, but that cuts it out with the border all around it. And I'm going to do that in a minute as well. But sometimes, it depends on what technique you're doing, sometimes you want it more fussy cut like this. So if I bring this back in now and put it over there, I can take a little bit of my, uh, I'm using Mermaid Lagoon because I love this bright blue. Make sure I haven't got filthy fingers again this time. And now I can make a little sort of sky effect without going over the chickens. Okay, peel off the masks. And then I can just colour the chickens in. Ooh, I can colour the chickens in whatever way I like. Or, or just even black and white, maybe that's quite cute just to leave them black and white. Um, I could also just use the masking paper like this and use a different colour. Um, this is called Antique Linen. I'll just give them a little bit of a ground as well. I feel like I need blue there now. So I can put that back to there. Put my chicken mask back and go back to the blue. Just finish that off. There we go. And as I say, I can just um, I can just colour those in in whichever way I want to. I can try colour pencils. Um, You can see kind of where I'm going with that. I, I, th I don't want to make this video really, really long, so I'm not going to like 
work through the whole thing i'm going to just show you my the techniques that i'm using and then come back at the end and show you some of the finished cards that i've done with it and i think you could use what any of these techniques with different stamp sets and things that you've got as well so another way of using the mask okay so what i want to do now is combine this hen with this hen to get a different character because i just love this kind of mop head <laughs> i just i just really think that's so cute and comical um so i want to kind of combine them and i've actually so here's two of the pieces i stamped on that distressed background just now this one i've just cut out the main body of the chicken and this one i've just cut out the mop head from the other one <laughs> but i need to get the i need to have part of both bodies so i reckon i can do this i reckon i can do this so i need the head of this one and the body of, of this one so i've got to make sure this tail doesn't show place her reasonably centrally there pick up the stamp but i'm going to put a little bit of masking paper over everything except the head so I've put that masking paper over everything except the head. And then I'm just going to stamp it up, ink it up rather, put it onto my card. I want to get this a little bit more of the neck this time. I'm able to take the masking paper off. <laughs> I've done that before. Now I've got the head of that chicken. <laughs> so that's kind of how she's going to look. So now I want the body of this chicken. I can always fill in little, just tiny missing bits with my with my pen if I need to. Oh, I didn't clean my stamp. Always clean your stamps in between because <laughs> otherwise you get this kind of situation. Okay, I'm going to carry on with this just to, just so I can show you and um, hopefully I can retrieve this. <laughs> so this time I'm going to mask off just the head. I love doing this kind of thing with stamps because it's just it's just like making it your own really. You know, you've got the basis there but you, you, you're kind of putting your own spin on it which I really like doing. Sometimes I'd even cut stamps up as well. Yep, yeah, that's going to work. Well, apart from where I've made the blooper there, but I think I might better cover that up somehow. This is where I always used to have baby wipes for doing this. And, um, and I'd keep a dry baby wipe handy as well. Just do wet and then dry. But I've tried to stop using baby wipes the last few years. That's my excuse, having dirty stamps. So that's, that's kind of what I mean, but I'm going to fill in um, with a pen as well. So I can fill in the... Um, the bits I've missed. I could even give her um, okay, some black and white stripes, that's quite fun. <laughs> I could change her feet as well if I wanted. You know, you can do all sorts of things. I always see these sort of things as just being a bit of a, just a, a kickoff point really. I could also, if I wanted to, add that on and put it on a little uh, foam pad or something or just, just curl, curl the edges of it a little bit and put a little foam pad on there if I wanted to give it a bit more three dimension and I could use this little fussy cut piece here as well I might have to colour that bit in orange uh -huh. I might cut out a yellow big yellow beak for her actually I quite like it when the beak is so big that it covers up her eyes you can't see her eyes anymore it's like her eyes are all covered up by a lovely mop of hair I just think she's a really comical character. I love that. Um, and then we well, need to think about the die cutting. There are lots of advantages of having the dies that match these stamps. You can do all kinds of things with them. I won't try and cover them all today. There's loads and loads of ideas. But um, one of my favourite things to do is to cut a peephole through. First thing I'm going to do is take my card and stamp my favourite chicken on it. Well, let's make sure she's clean. Not very clean, obviously. S stamp my image. I'm leaving the stamp on there. Just turn that card inside out. <sighs> it's 
So I'm now looking at the inside, putting it back in my stamp stamping platform in the same place. And I'm going to stamp it again. And now I'm going to cut this one out with the die so that this one can peek through. So I've got my, um, my little cutter bug out again. I'm going to need my my base, my base plate, my A plate, my thicker one, my C plate, it's a thicker cutting plate, and one of the B plates. Okay, again, okay, take another one of these pieces, and I'm going to put my chicken die down there. And I'm just going to use a little bit of tape to hold it still. Put my B plate over the top, and I'm just cutting out the, the die on its own. And this is to make like a little jig to help me position the dies accurately in a minute. I can keep that because I can use that as a mask in a moment. So now I've got this little jig. So when I want to cut this piece out, oops, I'm around, I can. I hope the camera's going to show this. There we go. I can move it around until that outline is nice and evenly placed all around the image. Can you see that? Because otherwise it's very easy to just get it off like this. When you come to place the die, it's quite hard to see what you're doing. If you do this first, it makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to do that. Tape it on. And then, so it's a lot easier, I'm not trying to hold it out for the camera, I can just slide this die in until I feel it click. There we are, it's just clicked into place into that hole that I've already cut. Now I need to make sure I open the card out because I don't want to cut through both thicknesses. <laughs> I just want to cut through one. Put my B plate on and run it through. So now I can just pop out this little piece. Which I can keep and use again. And now the little image that I've stamped inside lines up with the hole. So I can colour that in. I can stamp my greeting on here and you'll see you'll see the little chicken peeking through and then when you open it up there'll just be the chicken there and I can put my little word, I can write my message here. So that's quite fun. I just cut um, cut my chicken out of this washi, uh, washi paper, sticky note tape, stamp my little chicken girl again. You want to see if you can see what a shambles I'm working in here. Well, you can see it a bit on my desk, but there's nothing compared to what's all around me. Sometimes it's nice to just leave. Don't take this off straight away. Do your colouring in, and then you can always stamp again over the top if you've got one of these stamp jigs, uh, stamping platforms. That's really handy, that, because sometimes you just lose the clarity of the lines a little bit when, when you colour in, depending on what you're using. You can just stamp over the top and get nice, clean, crisp lines again. Or you can always just use a fine liner. You know. So now, say I wanted to just do a little indication. Let's go for blue sky again. I can just put this... It might be an idea to use the my little jig again. I know that's nicely placed. And now I can just take that blue sky colour again that I love, that Mermaid Lagoon, which I've lost also. Here it is. But I just took the time to tidy up a bit and get organised. All of this would be a lot more efficient. And um, I can do some, uh, I can just blend some sky around. So that I find it easier rather than just plonk down there. Start from, I have start from the edge and work in. But in this case, I want just a bit in the middle. So I'm going to start from in the middle where my mask is and go out. So I don't, hopefully don't get too harsh a lines. And I can take my mask off. 
There she is. So I could either, I quite like the look of it, black and white actually. I think that's quite stylish. Or I could maybe just do her hair. I could add a, um, a little greeting to that now. And then I could do again some sort of a, just a hand scribbly border. Oh, see, I'm going to have to cut this one down now because I managed to get ink on there. I'm doing this in a bit of a mess and a bit of a hurry. I will do some a bit more carefully off camera and come back and show you some examples in a bit. The next thing I'm going to do is um, a little bit of kind of, uh, I suppose you call it paper piecing really, using this pattern paper. So I've already uh, done it on one of the pattern papers and just cut out the hair and, and the and the main part of the body. It doesn't need to be a great image because I'm only cutting out that body shape. Now I need to just cut these two out. And if like me you don't mind a bit of therapeutic fussy cutting or cussy fighting as we used to call it, <laughs> then you won't mind doing this. If you hate doing this then do something more simple like that. And it's quite nice to just um, just use a coordinating ink. Don't need to be too fussy. Well, I just go around the edges a bit just to get, lose that kind of white paper, cut paper core thing. That way, or you could do it with a, you know, something darker to give it a bit more, more of a vintagey look, or give it a bit of shading. You know, if you wanted to, you could easily shade them a bit this way as well. With these distress inks, you'll find that even if you used this a couple of days ago, you'll still be able to use the ink on, on these. The ink still seems to work in these brushes. You can wash the brushes and use them again as well. <laughs> Pink hair looked quite cute on that one. Or oh, that one. So you can do things like with the masking off thing I was showing just now. I could just ma mask off her feet and draw my own little feet in, have them doing a can-can or something. You do all kinds of things with these sort of stamp sets. You don't have to use them just as they were designed, you know. I like getting a bit creative with them. Um, another fun thing you can do with stamps, I don't think particularly with this set, but maybe some of the other ones that I've got to uh, play with soon, um, you can stamp onto fabric and then stitch into it. Yeah, I guess you could do it with these, couldn't you? It'd be quite fun to stitch into, actually. Now I've said you could, maybe not with these. Actually, that would be quite a fun one to stitch into. So maybe I'll do that soon as well. So another little fun thing you can do with the uh, with the dies, which is to use them to emboss with. If I remember right whatever sandwich which is like the concoct the, the layers of, of um, cutting plates you use whichever sandwich you would use for using an embossing folder that's what you use for this plus you need an embossing mat as well if you haven't got an embossing mat try experimenting with craft foam but it doesn't work quite so easily you have to fiddle a little bit so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna put the embossing mat on so I've got my thinner, my B plate there, and a second B plate, then my embossing mat, then my card. I've got my stamping jig that I created earlier on, and I'm just going to line that up, and then I'm going to put my die back in, so it nestles into that slot. A little bit of tape to hold it all together. Put my B plate on top. And run it through and this time it shouldn't cut it should just emboss that doesn't feel like it's had enough bite that's not done anything sometimes you have to put an extra little shim in it's done it's it's you can see it's embossed it a little bit but that's not quite enough for what i want if i can just take it a step just make it a little a little bit more let's try putting that under there See that's embossed quite strongly now. <laughs> I really can't get the camera to show it, but it is quite an interesting effect that you've got this sort of almost, yeah, you've just got this embossed effect. Take my word for it, it's quite fun. 
Right, so now I'm just going to... Oh, I'm going to have to use my jig again, aren't I? It is handy being able to do this. <laughs> Otherwise you really can't see where you're going. Again, I'm starting from inside the masks, really, just to try and not get any harsh lines. And then I can just glue in my little, uh, my little bodies here. quite handy using the back of my hand to spread the glue out a little bit and take off the excess so it's on the back of my hand then I'm not so likely to transfer it all over what I've done and get myself in a mess well, I can either leave them like that or uh, I might just put some I like the to, to make a bigger size yellow beak I might just do that I might color the hair I'll have it I'll see how I I'll see how I feel in a minute I mean seeing as I have cut this one I could just get a quick idea and it would be quite nice to raise the hair up on just a little skinny foam dot, I suppose, behind there. But I might just colour them for this because I, I do want to keep this this little set quite flat for the post. Chunkier beak than, than in the stamped image. That's another way you can just, you know, you can just make it your own. Quite like just a, just a comically large beak like that. Yeah, I think that finishes it off nicely. I could dot some little uh, pole drops around if I wanted. I could definitely stamp um, a greeting along here I probably will and I could back it with some some of the pattern paper say I wanted this colour I mean I could use this and um, also use this oops, <laughs> some of this paper here that I've that I made earlier and, and haven't used and that would make a nice a nice backing for it as well wouldn't it I could do my doodly line as well whatever uh, I'll have a little play um, and the other thing you can do is just take whichever your your favourite colour, <laughs> pink, a coordinating ink, and just run it along the edge. Leave it for a while to dry, and then you've got a coordinating um, edge, so you can use it that way as well. Which quite nice, sets them off nicely, doesn't it? You know, I could use the same inks to create my my mat there for the for the card to my mount as I've used to ink her up with so yeah so that is a whole lot of ideas really at the end I'll come back and show you my finished little set of cards really all I'm doing is trying out these stamps and die sets to see what they're like and I'm very impressed with them uh, they work brilliantly and there's lots of scope or oh, didn't use that one yeah if you do want uh, proper tutorials for card making there's a lot of uh, a lot of people way better at it than i am uh, jennifer mcguire is one i've been watching on and off for donkey's years she's just brilliant just never-ending stream of ideas and she's so good at it and so good at explaining it so i suggest for a proper tutorial go and watch someone like her there's lots of others as well and uh, but I'm really just trying out these products to see what they're like and I'm, I'm really quite impressed with them. So um, I will come back in a bit and show you my show you my finished set. And if anybody, you know, if there is anything that you wish I'd covered properly, just give me a shout in the comments and I'm happy to try to help if I can. Okay, back in a mo. I've finished my first little set of cards um, using this using the set. I really love the set actually, really enjoyed using it. I think there's a lot more possibilities with it as well um, I'm quite looking forward to trying building up some little scenes with the different dies and things and just making kind of three-dimensional scenes which is something I love to do but as I said earlier I, I really need these to be flat to go in the envelopes and keep a postage down <laughs> let's have a quick look I used I had I used all of these um, but I ended up making my finished cards I just love this little character so much more than the other so I've gone I've used her every time I did stamp out the egg as well just to show you how it how it comes out is quite cute and you could equally well stamp it and just color in the egg part and the, and the little feet if you wanted to um so let's have a quick look um that one's pretty much as i left it uh, i did i i put some distress ink down on my glass mat again spritzed it with water and used um used my fan brush 
like this to create some splatters because I thought that would be a bit of fun. I've stamped the little chicken now. I think I probably already showed you that. But just give you an idea of what that could look like if I put that inside and said that's quite cute. Here's how this one turned out. I mounted it. I, I did my, my scribbly line around. I did my hay chick. Um, can't remember where I left it. And now I think I, I've since filming earlier I've added the beaks on and I put a, um, some metallic card behind here just to frame it and set it off which I think is quite nice so that's on one of the artful cards I suddenly realised um, after the first one that I could stick my mounting card onto, onto there and not have artful all over the back of it because you know I made the card not artful <laughs> I have actually got a really cute stamp that my husband got me a few years back which comes out arty farty annie so that's really cute so i can stamp that on the back if you like making cards and you haven't got one of these i think they're a fairly reasonable price so um and all you need is a little ink pad to go with it it's really fun it's really fun to be able to do that and you can use it to stamp on um tags and things as well That smut was already there, I'll rub that off in a minute. So it's got a nice feel to do that, and I quite like that typewriter font. He actually uh, let me choose the font and stuff myself rather than do it as a complete surprise, which is nice, because I don't know if he'd have picked that, but I quite like the look of it. So yeah, it's a nice little thing to put on your, on your, on your wish list for Christmas, maybe, <laughs> if you haven't got one and you like making cards and things. This one, um, I used a bit of plain green card first, and then some of that gorgeous uh, print. I just love these prints. <laughs> Other people might find them a bit much, but I love them. And then it's actually a bit of the print um, stamped and, and fussy cut for the body. And the, the mad mop of hair and the tail are done in colour pencils and the feet all done in colour pencils. I think this is probably my favourite. I used the dye to cut the shape and, then, and I coloured um, the image with colour pencils. I fussy cut this. I'd already fussy cut that before and had this kind of... Uh, spare fussy cut hair head, head hair thing <laughs> um already cut out so i thought i might as well use it so i've just popped a couple of thicknesses of card there just cut into a little snippet of card glued under there to, to raise it up a little bit and i've actually glued together three thicknesses of the die um in behind there so i just cut it plain a couple of times glued them up to get to get the thickness oh hang on yeah so that it, it's got a bit more dimension. Yeah, I just quite like, I just, I don't know, I just quite like the way that one turned out. I think that is my favourite. I might just make a few more of them. The thing about making cards is like, it takes me ages the first time I do. One has taken me quite a while putting just this little set together. But if I picked a couple of these that I really not like and just reproduce them a few times, it'll be quite quick now because I'm not working anything out as I go. It's quite colourful in real life, but on the camera, that's really, it looks quite pale. It just looks like she's already been plucked or something. <laughs> Then around the edges of this one, so with that one I use the metallic card behind to mat it on. This one I used a combination of the orange marmalade and the picked raspberry distress inks just swiped around the edge to create a, um, a border that of course automatically matched my background because it's the same inks. And so this is the last one. Um, again more of that little uh, kind of distress ink background that I used there, more scribbly lines just cut, uh, stamped the sentiment onto a scrap of card, cut round it, put it on a bit of black card, cut round it again. Um, and I did that trick that I showed where you can cut the peephole that I showed earlier on. And again, I've layered up a, two or three thicknesses of the, of the die cut piece here so that actually if you squash it, if you shut it completely, it's flush with the card because I've got this kind of double thickness here. And then when you open it, this, uh, you can just see the uh, the bird. So she's peeking through there and here. Just, and then I just um, used a bit of a colour called Blueprint Sketch, which I love. So that was picking up the blue in the flowers on here. And I also used a similar colour of colour pencil to do the, the hair and the tail for this one. And it's just cut out of a little scrap of that background. <laughs> I'm quite happy with how those have turned out. I was really impressed with the um, with, with the stamp set. There are probably some expert card makers who would have done a much more amazing job than me. But as I say, my purpose was just to try these out 
and see how they worked and um, I'm very happy indeed with them. I think I said earlier on I think it, it was six pounds for this set so that includes all of these dies and I've not used the half of the dies yet. I'll come back and do another thing with them. So you get these stamps, you get the dies to cut all of these shapes, not, not the words but they're easy enough to just cut out like that and lots and lots of other shapes as well there which I, I'm looking forward to having a bit of a play with. Should put some distress inks in my thumbnail. There's my thumbnail. So I hope you enjoyed that. It's a bit of a long one. A whole lot of ideas and uh, little tips and stuff that I've picked up that I thought you might find it useful. And um, so I hope you felt inspired by that. And if you've got different stamp sets, you could try using the same kind of ideas um, with whatever you've got. As I say, I will put links to One Day Saving and this particular set in the description box. I will also put links to, oh, I'll put my link tree. So if you go there, you can find links to the um, Arty Farty Annie group on Facebook and our free Discord community so you can uh, meet other creative people, share your ideas, share your inspiration, show us what you're up to. It's just a really nice, happy... Uh, this morning we've just mainly been talking about what term um, programs we like to watch on Netflix, actually. <laughs> a lot of my um, fellow YouTubers are on there as well, so um, it's a really nice way to sort of get to know us all a bit better too and a way for us to be able to get to know you. Hopefully I'll see you in there. If not, I'll see you again on here really soon. Did I say thank you? <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs>